Hello. So today we have the differentiation of white-footed mice, Paramiscus leocopus, from deer mice, Paramiscus moniculitis, using salivary amylase and the technique cellulose acetate electrophoresis. This is done by Vanessa, Lauren, Taylor, Cole, Amelia, and Kelly under the influence and mentorship of Dr. Joseph Whitaker. So here is just our actual poster itself. And you can pause the video or to take a look at it, um, or you can attend the poster session that will be taking place um, later this week during the convention. So, yep. Okay, so just kind of a basic premise of our research is that we compare these two mammals, um, white-footed or paramiscus leocopus versus deer mice, paramiscus maniculitis. And these two species are evolutionarily distinct. So you would think that they'd have characteristics, morphological characteristics that display this uniqueness. But when compared to previous research that uses external measurements of the tail, the pelage, the hind feet, the ears, and cranial measurements to distinguish these two, you find that it's only accurate about 55 to 66 percent of the time. So we, along with other groups, have um, tried to look at uh, if there's a more accurate way by using salivary amylase and gel electrophoresis. So over the course of 2004 to 2019, during the summer, live trapping occurred in various sites within northwestern Minnesota. And these mice were captured and morphological measurements were taken, such as hind foot length, ear length, tail pigmentation, sex, weight, and ultimately the saliva. And then we bring it into the lab after this data has been collected and we analyze it through gel electrophoresis or cellulose acetate electrophoresis. And we wanna measure these because we put the saliva bands on a cellulose acetate plate, and then we run it under gel electrophoresis, and we see how far the bands migrate. And leocopus, paramiscus leocopus saliva bands migrate further than paramiscus maniculitis. And so we use that to distinguish what the actual species of the mice are. So for our graph and our results, basically what we did was looking at the data, we broke it up into the prairie regions versus the forest regions. And we looked at measuring, as Vanessa said, cranial measurements, hind foot measurements, tail length and ear length. After looking at and taking those measurements and comparing them to the salivary amylase measurements, um, we found that for averages for the hind foot um, provided the best indicator for the difference um, between, in the prairie regions, whereas the tail length provided the best indicator of difference, morphologically speaking, for the maniculitis. In the forest regions, looking at those for the hind foot data in the prairie, the average hind foot length for the maniculitis was 17.3 compared to the uh, leocopus, which was 18.8 millimeters. For the forest regions, the maniculitis was 19.9, whereas the leocopus was 20.1 millimeters, respectively, um, demonstrating that although slight, leocopus had a slightly longer, larger hind foot length. Looking at the tail in the prairie, for the maniculitis, we have 61.7. Whereas for the leocopus, we have 69.4. And then in the forest, we have 86.95 for the maniculitis versus 78.1 millimeters for the uh, leocopus in the forest, demonstrating that in the prairie, the tail length was larger for the leocopus. However, in the forest, it was larger for the maniculitis. Graphing the distribution of those averages, we found that statistically they were significant, as in for the two species in the forest for tail length, it was 0 0.0002, and in the prairie it was 0 0.004, demonstrating the statistical significance. However, for the 
two species in the forest for the hind foot length, it was 0.4278 and in the prairie was 0 0.0234, demonstrating not as large of a uh, significance, especially in regards for the forest uh, hind foot length. Looking, however, at our data, we see this, uh, uh, the majority of our graphs turned out their distribution wise, similar to the one above, um, which demonstrates that although there is a statistical significance, there is overlap um, in the error and in the distribution of the data points, therefore providing a contradictory um, remark on if it's actually statistically significant or not. The in analyzing the total data results, it, um, between the morphological data correctly identified using the salivary amylase data as the base, we found that for the promiscuous leocopus, we had about a 79.7 accuracy rate between the forest and the prairie. And then for the maniculitis, we had an 83.8% accuracy identification um, when compared to the salivary data. So although it is, not as high as the salivary data, um, it is represents it's still prone to error. So basically our conclusion that we found was that with the morphological data that we collected, it was hard to give a sure and steady yes or no of whether a species was maniculitis or leocopus. Although the values that we found were had higher averages for the percentage of time that morphological characteristics correctly identified the saliva species, it wasn't as accurate as the actual salivary amylase itself. And we can see that due to climate change and due to a variety of other factors that these species are converging and they're moving into each other. And so we can see this overlap of morphological characteristics that we haven't necessarily seen in the past. And this could be, our data could be due to the errors and the difference in how our values were higher than research studies have shown, because research has shown 55 to 66% of the time. This could be due to some error in measurements on our part or some error in saliva and technique, um, but with keeping ourselves accurate as well as we can, we found that although morphological characteristics were higher than recorded in literature and they were more accurate than seen in the 55 to 66%, we, it still wasn't as good as the actual salivary amylase data. Um, looking forward, uh, more research will be dedicated to analyzing more salivary data to fill in gaps in the years and to just kind of get a broader range of data to work with. Um, additionally, we're going to break the data down by years to rather than doing it as a collective so we can see any patterns in changing. We can see if morphological characteristics have gotten more similar, if it's becoming more accurate. We can just kind of take a look at that. And we can just look at data abnormalities also. Um, one literature showed that they were trying to see if there was a hybrid between the paramiscus leocopus and paramiscus maniculitis species. Um, but we're just going to look at more data and more literature and continue on with the project. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and listen to us. We appreciate you. Have a wonderful day.